In an ABC 17 News report, I'm Joey Parker. Thank you for joining us right now. University of Missouri head football coach Gary Pinkle and Mizzou Athletic Director Mac Rhodes are just moments away from speaking at a news conference. We have cameras, we have reporters on the scene as well. And this comes, of course, just hours after UM System President Tim Wolf announced his resignation. And we see them, of course, here at the table. And we're going to... Let's go ahead and take them live. Of our university, of our uh, coaches, staff, and, uh, and student athletes. I've been an administrator here, an athletic administrator, for about 18 years, 19 years. And uh, certainly the last two days, candidly, have been challenging. Uh, there's, there's no playbook, uh, there's no script uh, for, for what all of us uh, have, have been dealing with. And, uh, and I think certainly uh, it's been also a great learning experience for, for everyone involved. These are, are the past few days have been certainly extraordinary circumstances for many reasons, for many reasons. But primarily because a young man's life, Jonathan Butler, his life was at stake. And that was real for our student athletes. That was real for our young men who compete on our football uh, field, who maybe have never ever dealt with that. And so our student athletes, they decided to get involved and quite frankly, simply, we supported them. As an athletic department, we talk about preparing champions for life. 550 student athletes. And we do everything we can to teach them, to educate them. At the end of the day, we're teachers, we're educators. And we do everything we can to do that. We do everything to do that we can to make sure that they're leaders. And they decided to be leaders in this issue. To save a life of a fellow student athlete. And not just our black student athletes, but our black and white student athletes made that decision and all of our student athletes of that pro of that fo of the football program of all colors coach pinkle and i and others we met with them we listened to to the team we heard from our student athletes we supported them and i think it's important to know during those those discussions there was never any any talk about anybody losing their job it was simply and primarily about a young man's life. I think all of us in this room believe that this is not a sports issue. That this is a societal issue. And it's certainly not unique to this great institution. And yes, this great institution, our athletics program is not perfect. I also understand that you wouldn't be here today if our football student athletes didn't, didn't decide to get involved. All of us, and we've had intentional conversation about it, our coaches, our staff, our student athletes, we understand that not participating in an athletic activity is an extreme measure. We understand that. And by no means do we believe that this is an ideal way to evoke change or answer all of our problems. Problems we have today or problems of the future. Our hope is that we'll, this will be a learning opportunity for all of us. We hope that our athletics department, staff, coaches, student athletes can serve as leaders moving forward to help bring our campus together. Mizzou and I really believe this. The University of Mizzou is a wonderful place, and it is full of caring people. I've been on a lot of institutions, been on a lot of campuses. This is one of the most caring communities and caring institutions I've been a part of. And as I mentioned before, clearly, we're not perfect. As we move forward, it's paramount as a campus and a community that does not divide us but rather bring us together
to listen, to grow, to understand, and to create positive change. I want to thank Coach Pinkle for his leadership during this these past 48 hours. And I can assure you, our coaches, our staff, and 550 student athletes will be leaders in both healing and future change at the University of Missouri. Okay. Thanks, Mac. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here. I uh, appreciate you being here. I got involved uh, uh, because I support my players and a young man's life was on the line. And basically, that's, that's what it came down to. My support of my players had nothing to do with anyone losing their job. Uh, with something like this, you know, football uh, it became secondary. Um, Missouri's a great place. I love being here. I, I, my players, it, when we recruit, I tell everyone how much my players lo love Columbia and they love going to school here. Obviously, you know, we got some problems. And the, great, the good news is we're going to fix them, and Missouri's going to be a lot better place because of it. And, um, and I'm honored to be the head coach, and I'm ho honored uh, to be at the University of Missouri. Um, our team's uh, excited about getting going again and uh, playing, and we're looking forward to our game against BYU uh, this weekend. Okay, we do have uh, some wireless mics that we'll pass around, so if you'd raise your hand, we'll, we'll start here. And if you can get the mic down there. It's coming right behind you. Gentlemen, thanks. Uh, John Barr with ESPN. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you said there was never any talk about anybody losing his job, and yet this morning, your school president resigned. What was your reaction to that? You know, probably mixed emotion. Um, certainly had been conversing with President Wolf uh, over the last uh, day or two, and uh, I think President Wolf is a is a caring man, is uh, somebody that. Uh, deeply certainly cares about this institution. Uh, I think that uh, he probably realized it was at a point that uh, to begin the healing process that, uh, that he needed to step down. And uh, I think certainly all of us admire him for that. Uh, as, as mentioned before, um, you know, or maybe not mentioned before, um, Coach Pinkle nor I, um, have have uh, any say or power to make those types of decisions, um, but uh, certainly uh, I, I think that was a big maybe step in, in in terms of the healing process as as President Wolf mentioned himself. Okay. Okay. For uh, Gabe DeArmond with Power Mizzou, and I'd like both of you guys to address this. I mean, you've stressed that there was no talk of anyone losing his job, but. The statement that was tweeted out by your players specifically said, we will no longer participate in football-related activities until President Tim Wolf resigns or is removed. How do we justify those two statements? Well, first of all, my standpoint is uh, my players uh, called me and told me they were going to go over on campus that day, and, and they asked me if it was okay to do that. And my players, are those guys are real good leaders. And they want to get more involved with, with the campus, and I think I, I, don't, I think that's positive. I think that's a positive environment to have. And then I got a call later that night uh, about Jonathan. Uh, guys were very, very emotional, and they were they were um, very, very concerned with his life. And then at that time, they were discussing, you know, with me uh, what they what they planned on doing this weekend. And you know, we went back and forth, and I kept asking them, "Is it the right thing to do? I mean, you know, should you wait?" And, and so on and so forth. And, and they—I mean, I'm talking to guys that have tears in their eye and they're crying. And they asked me if I'd support them, and I said I would. I didn't look at consequences. That wasn't about it at the time. It was about helping my players and supporting my players when they needed me. And I did the right thing, and I would do it again. Can we go down here? That was Saturday night. Go ahead, Dennis. And, and I think, you know, some of the, 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 the same sentiments that, that Coach just talked about, you know, uh, one of our student athletes talked about they've, they've never seen a, a, a person dying in front of them. And, uh, and for many of these, these young men, that, 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 that was real. And I think as they slept on it and, and we met that next day, that Sunday, um, 
We had discussion, and it wasn't about, you know, any one person resigning. It was about what can we do to make sure Jonathan Butler eats. And that, and that was absolutely most of the conversation. Okay, Dennis. Uh, get Dennis Dodd, CBSSports.com. Gary, and then I have a follow-up. Coaches mm -hmm. are used to control, if not total control. How did that feel at that moment the last two days when you didn't know if you were going to play a game next Saturday? Well, you know, it, I think, um, you know, what, what, I, I don't think really at the time the game's important. We wanted to play the football game. But it was still about, about this young man. And, um, you know, at the, at the time, Saturday, Sunday, it's, it's not about football. It had to do with football. It's about my, my players need my support, and I'm going to support them. And we, we knew it would play out one way or the other. We had no idea how it was going to go, and uh, it just happened to go the way it did. And, and just to follow up, give, based on the events of the last two days, is it fair to ask a couple of players could address why they didn't want to talk? No, I, 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 what they did, the guys that were a part of this, they made a decision. They didn't want to have to put their players through it, their, their teammates through it, and they didn't want to do it, and, and they were going to be part of another rally. So that was, their, that was their choice. Consistently also with what we do is generally if a player has any kind of issue at all, that week they will not be in front of the media, and our whole football team was there. But they made that decision. I mean, that was absolutely 100% their decision. They, they weren't told. They made it for the whole team. No, no, okay. they were they not told. They weren't told not to no, talk. No, they were not told. Okay, over there. But they made it for the whole team, and we tweeted, and, and we texted out to our whole team, which we do sometimes. Uh, hi, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, this is Mark for Coach over here. Mark Tracy yes. from the New York Times. Yes. Um, kind of two related questions. One is, um, you know, you say Saturday night, what's your understanding of kind of how, obviously they're members of the campus community, but what's your understanding of how your players w learned of the rally? I know it was in the news, so maybe they just read about it, but were they reached out to? Did they reach out to the protesters? What's your understanding of that? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. And I don't track everything my players do, so I, I have no idea. Right. They, just, they said they were, they, they, they were getting involved, and they just want to let us know, let me know that they were doing it. They communicate well, and that's, I didn't go into, you know, who's your connection there, right. or why are you there, why are you a part of that? Well, then my second question, and it kind of follows up on the last one, and it also pertains to what you just said, which is, obviously there has to be a balancing act, you know, to run a football team, you know, you need a certain kind of hierarchy. That's kind of the way all things work, but especially probably football as a sport works. Um, and what you're saying about how if someone, if a player does not feel comfortable going before the media, then you try not to. At the same time, um, here they obviously successfully um, convinced you guys to support them in not wanting to play. Um, they didn't want to be uh, interviewed today. Going forward, when there are future issues, maybe there won't be a person's life at stake. It won't be something so dire. Where will you guys, and I guess for both of you, where will you draw the line between saying, you know, we respect your autonomy in saying, hey, we need to do things this way because that's the way we need to do things. Well, again, first of all, they, they decided what they were going to do, and we allowed them to do that, okay? They, they decided that. Uh, we generally always have our, our players in front of the media unless there's some kind of a disciplinary issue or something that happened, and we, we do it the following week, so it's consistent there. But uh, this is a normal situation. No, there's nothing normal about this. There's absolutely nothing normal about this whole situation. I've been I've been a head coach 25 years and been a, co and been a coach for 39 years, and uh, this is, this isn't in in uh, you know football 101. Yeah. And 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 let me just add on to that. You know, let me let me be clear. Um, I think you know our, our staff, our coaches, all of us do a great job of directing and leading our student athletes, and uh, we we certainly don't always agree, uh, or certainly our student athletes don't always agree with us. Um, and um, so we, you know, we provide the leadership. And again, I go back to extraordinary circumstances. This, again, candidly, th th this, this, this was tough. Um, you know, when you have student athletes and their rally cry in that meeting is save a life, that's hard. Okay. Back here. Go ahead. Coach Pinkle, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Yes, Why is it that Jonathan Butler's plight resonated so deeply, do you think, with your team? And why then did it also, because they approached you, resonate enough with you to all of you take this action? 
Well, you know, I, 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 I believe they thought that if we don't help him, if he doesn't start eating, he's going to die. And I don't know anything more serious than that. And, and they called me and talked to me and, and you know, we got to do this, coach. And we're, we're worried about this guy. You should see this guy. In the, in the description that they were go, talking about to him, as it was just, it wasn't very, it was, it was, it was n not very good. And, uh, and so, therefore, we, you know, that's, that's why, you know, I decided to support him. And uh, that's it. But beyond his, his medical condition, there was a social issue that was at stake. I mean, why was that important to your players and to you? The social, social issue? The racial issue, the thing that, the reason he was starving. That was, that, I know, but that, I, that, that really what his position was, that, it wasn't, that wasn't what I got involved with. My players, they're my kids. I love those guys. I got 127 of them, okay? And when they say they need my support, I certainly n knew about what, what, what was going on in the, on the university, but him, it had nothing to do with that. It, had no, it simply had to do with my players c deeply cared about this guy, and he was dying, and will you support me, coach? And that's what I did. Blake. Gary, Blake Topmeyer, Columbia Tribune. Before the, the message was sent out uh, on Saturday night that, that the players in that photo weren't going to participate in football activities. Did the entire team know that that was going to be announced, or, or were there members of the team that found out when that message was posted? Yeah, I think there's members of the team that they found out when it was posted. And I tried to get them to wait till the next morning, and they just, they just, you know, they, they wanted to, to do it then. I mean, that was just, they were so emotional. And um, they decided to do it then. And um, uh, the next day, uh, what happened is we had, a, we had a team meeting the next day, and probably about 90% of our players were here about 3 o'clock. The team talked by themselves, and we went back into the dining area, and we sat down around, and we talked, and we listened, and had some real good discussion. Uh, everybody was in. And when I say we say everybody's in, I think this is a little bit like, you know, the culture that we have here. You know, when Michael Sam a couple years ago, when we were, we're, we were going through that situation, uh, it was a bit very similar to that. that you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that some players said, I don't know if I really agree with missing a game for this, but we're a team and we're a family, and I get and I feel what those guys are feeling, and I'm going to su support them. So to sit there and say, everybody raised their hand, said, I'm in, I'm in, they certainly did. But at the end of the day, certainly there were some players that just, that just went along with it, most likely, because it was, it was, it was their football team and their family, and they were going to support them. For just as the same situation that happened a couple years ago. Uh, for coaches, this is Mark Seelig of the Columbia Missourian. Uh, before the last two days, how closely did you follow the events that were playing out on campus, and what were your general thoughts regarding them? I didn't, honestly, during the football season, I knew I was aware of it. Obviously, you know, I just, you're, you're, you're aware of it, that I read it and study it and so on and so forth. No, during the football, I live in, a, I live in, uh, in blinders, okay? And uh, I knew it was serious. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, obviously, I didn't, I didn't study it with great detail. It being the face of the university in many ways, do you feel like it's your responsibility to, to take more interest in things that go beyond football? Well, I think I'm very interested in everything at this university. Um, if you got my job, you know what? Your focus during the season is taking care of my players and doing the best I can um, at my job. And uh, I think I'm very involved with this university. I love this place. And, and let me add on to that. Um, we certainly think as... as leaders and because of the platform right or wrong that that athletics provides that we can be a leader in, in this and, and as I mentioned in my in my opening stadium um, we're, we're committed to doing that uh, you know we, we have some issues again we talked about it we're not perfect we have some issues on this campus we have some issues um, you know in our athletic department and, uh, and and we need to face those head on and 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 resolve them and, and we uh, we've got a lot of smart people in our athletic department, a lot of caring people, and, and that certainly starts with our student athletes. And, uh, and we can be leaders uh, in, in helping resolve, as Mark uh, mentioned, so, some of the social issues. Uh, Matt Gary, this is Joe Strauss, St. Louis Post Dispatch. How do you view this situation here as a precedent? Do you see it as a positive precedent, a precarious precedent? For example, there are obviously some demands attached to what has been going on here, if perhaps these demands aren't met, 
if your players were to come back and to reiterate their the stance they took in the last 48 hours, how would you respond then? So, I mean, how do you, uh, beyond this being an isolated case, how do you see this perhaps setting up going forward? Even with our football team or just societal? What do you no, mean? no, your, your, your program, your football team. Well, I, I think we're going to, I mean, we're going to have a meeting tonight, you know, uh, and then we're going to, uh, and, and that they, that's what they want to do, and then we're going to get back to business as usual, what we do, and, and focus on, on what we do and, and um, you know, get, our, get all our focus back to the preparation for our game. But in terms of this bringing a precedent for something in the future, how do you feel about that? And when you talk about precedents, you, you're, you're talking about not not playing, correct? As, that was on the table, forward. yes. Okay. Um, again, I think I mentioned earlier, it, it's certainly not ideal. Uh, it's not anything that we're going to go out and suggest to our student athletes. That um, are there other solutions? Are there other conversations, uh, etc.? I go back to extraordinary circumstance and and, and again I'm, I'm not going to apologize for keep going back to that because that's what this was okay and and sometimes extraordinary circumstances require uh, extraordinary measures and uh and i think that that's what our i, I believe that's what our student uh, student athletes on our football team felt was necessary um are we going to solve every issue every problem this way absolutely not no, no, no. no. um uh, you know so do I think this will be a precedence? You know, I can't foresee the, 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 the future, but, but certainly in our athletics department, um, you know, we will try to make sure that, that, we, that we bring other solutions um, as, as we face, you know, other, other problems. Do you feel you all were leveraged in this position? That was Mizzou football coach Gary Pinkle, and of course right there, Mizzou athletic director Mac Rhodes, and they're calling the whole situation not ideal. We will continue to follow this story and have the latest coming up starting on ABC 17 News at 5. You can also find updates online at abc17news.com. We'll see you a little later today.